Hello again, it's Amanda Stott and this week we're looking at legal issues and healthcare information. The topic for this week is based on Chapter 7 of your legal text, Staunton and Chiarella. Uh, please read selectively as again there is quite a large amount of information here and be guided by what's covered in the objectives for the week for the areas to focus on. The learning outcomes for this week are threefold. Basically it's important that you recognize the importance of maintaining a patient's confidentiality from a, a legal, ethical and professional perspective. It's important you understand the guidelines or policies that are in place to, in order to maintain patient confidentiality. So through this uh, module it's important that you access the New South Wales Health Privacy Manual, a lot of information there and remembering that you're not expected to know all the information in these manuals but most importantly um, we're more concerned that you're able to find information or know where the information is contained. So in the event that you don't know something you know where to go and find it. So we'll, we'll do that in the activities and the tutorials as well. And it's important that you are aware of confidentiality, it's privacy and confidentiality. Uh, usually the terms are used interchangeably, but we'll see that they are slightly different. But um, we'll certainly look at ways that health professionals can inadvertently breach confidentiality from um, a work perspective. Uh, and, you know, where to be careful. But there's also instances at law where it is important that you do breach or you know privacy is overruled if you like so we need to know the circumstances where that is viable as well so we'll we'll look at that in turn important in this topic it's uh, important that you understand the difference between the two terms privacy and confidentiality these two the terms are normally used sometimes interchangeably but they're actually quite distinct and I suppose the best way to understand it is if we look at one as being very legislative or legal and the other being more a professional duty. So when we talk about privacy uh, in the healthcare context, nurses have legislative obligations to comply with the Privacy Act. It's actually a very, very complex area, the Act itself. There's several iterations of it. But all nurses under that legislation, if we can sort of look at it as a broad un umbrella term, the Privacy Act is from a legal perspective what we have to um, protect. So information concerning a pa pa person's health or patient's health um, is protected by law and that includes their notes about their symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, any specialist reports, test results, uh, prescriptions, pharmaceutical purchases, dental records, genetic information, uh, their health care identifier, any other information concerning their race, sexuality or religion and that's the sort of information that is protected by law. Of course as nurses and other health professionals professionals as through the course of our work we do have access to that but we must realize that uh, we have to be very very careful in who that information or what that information in what way is disclosed and that's where confidentiality comes in that's the uh, trust aspect if you like or the professional obligation to uh, look after and advocate for your patients so there's an element of trust for example whenever you go to your general practitioner and you divulge information with them for whatever it might be you won't actually say to them now you won't be telling anyone about this will you because it's an expected component of the healthcare relationship that element of trust and it's the same when patients are in hospital uh, nurses and many others have access to this important information um, patients will tell nurses things that they hold in confidence and there's the expectation through your code of conduct, your code of ethics that you will uphold that confidentiality. So I think it's useful to distinguish between the two. Privacy is 
one and the same that you are keeping things confidential, not divulging them, but it's that legal ramification or legal boundary known as the Privacy Act that surrounds that. And then there's confidentiality, which is about the the personal relationship, the the ethical component of uh, looking after your patient in that way and not disclosing anything. Let's look at some of the ways that patient's confidentiality is either inadvertently or sometimes deliberately breached within the hospital setting. And as I've mentioned, patients themselves do not, as a rule, state that the information they're giving is confidential. It's just an expectation that, that they assume that, that because they're giving information to health professionals, it will be used solely to assist in their care and not shared unnecessarily among other people. And as I've said, the last time you had a health check, you probably divulged a significant amount of info to your doctor or the nurse you saw. And you can only imagine how you would react if you found out that that information was being uh, shared with colleagues or someone outside that circle. So it's the same with um, when patients go to hospital. There's a huge amount of people who have access to patient records. Uh, or medical notes. For example, in a doctor's surgery um, or a specialist surgery, those notes are transcribed by a secretary, hospital records filed by clerks, filing. Doctor's surgeries are cleaned, cleaners, uh, a lot of stuff are kept is online, passwords, uh, screens are left open, people don't use passwords correctly, and just the motivation is a huge uh, component of accessing information. For example, some of you, when you're going out on PRAC, or you may know a friend or relative or someone you know, uh, but, you know, what was their motivation for maybe looking at a patient's note? Is your motivation idle curiosity, or was it pro for professional learning? Uh, so potentially an enormous amount of people have access to patient notes and while some sta staff do need access to help the patient, for others that need might be questionable or access is clearly unnecessary. So it always relates to necessary or unnecessary access. Potentiality can be breached simply due to the enormous amount of people who do have access to information and the more people who have access the risk is increased but it also relates to individual personal um, circumstances or the conduct of individuals in question and it usually comes down to two broad categories where it can be inadvertent which means it's not intentional it's sort of a mistake and that will be usually when policies and procedures are not followed correctly for example not guarding passwords or, or something like that uh, in relation to electronic uh, notes and so forth or it can be quite deliberate which is obviously a much more serious aspect and to give you an example of one very serious breach it was a United Kingdom case that occurred in a hospital uh, over there in the UK. It concerned a nurse and the patient was a 16-year-old girl who was coming in for an abortion or had an abortion very, very from a very religious family. And the nurse who became aware of the situation was friends with the um, parents or family of this young girl and divulged the very personal um, procedure that their daughter had occurred. So obviously from a religious perspective it was catastrophic in terms of the outcomes and the harm caused to that young girl who was I think thrown out of home and it was all sorts of things and the nurse faced um, disciplinary action to the highest level. So that was quite deliberate. And that's, you know, we've got lots of different cases where confidentiality is breached. Uh, so you need to be very, very careful because, again, we'll talk about this in a little minute, but there's different ways you can face um, action at law when confidentiality is breached. 
So we've just discussed the fact that there is a legal duty for nurses to maintain privacy, but the law recognises that there are some circumstances which allow disclosure to be made public. And it's usually in the all to do within the public interest. So to give some examples, under the Public Health Act, uh, for example, the certain notifiable diseases uh, that must be reported, and that would mean that obviously patients' confidentiality, even though it's within a particular context, but nonetheless their confidentiality is breached, which means they don't have much choice in the, the matter. So things like brucellosis and uh, HIV, they're all notifiable diseases, SARS, all of those. So that's again under the Public Health Act. Under the uh, Department of Community Service and Child Care and Protection Act, uh, docs, when there's a suspected case of child abuse, um, health professionals are mandated to report their, those. Whenever there's um, a suspected crime, uh, you know, um, so for example, if a person comes into the emergency department and two people come in and one has attacked the other and, you know, there's clearly a criminal case, those healthcare records may well be subpoenaed. So under the Privacy Act, under law, under the Crimes Act, uh, those notes can be subpoenaed. So there's lots of different examples, so make sure that you know those. We do do some in the tutorials as well, but if you're in any doubt, refer to the New South Wales Health Privacy Manual. And if we've got time at the end of this lecture, I'll actually do that for you. So, I'll just... There's no doubt that when there is particularly a deliberate breach of confidence that it is a very serious matter. And it's Wallace who suggests that there's three actions of common law uh, that are available to the plaintiff or patients whose confidences have been breached. The first one's sort of an overarching one of breach of contract because when a patient goes to ho hospital, there is a, a relationship, a legal relationship or contract between the hospital and the patient. So even if you're the nurse and you breach their confidentiality, uh, it's really the, con the contract would be between the patient and the nurse's employer so that any legal action is likely to name the hospital and not the nurse. All right, so that's that one. Negligence, uh, if it's sort of, again, if uh, a plaintiff or patient can um, pursue a civil action if they can prove that damage is done to them, and we spoke about that in the earlier lecture. Uh, negligence, if you remember, damage can come in the form of psychological damage, financial damage, um, so all sorts of damages can accrue. So again, it must be proven, and um, yes, that would be one way. And then, of course, defamation, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But as well as those civil actions under the civil torts, if you like, but remembering for the nurse, even though if they are implicated in a breach of confidence and, um, you know, the hospital, if you like, will be named as the defendant. But the nurse, the individual nurse, what can happen to them? Well, they can face disciplinary action by their employer. Uh, there's been several cases. I think there's one that I refer to in your modules where a nurse was sacked. Um, for taking at Norwest Private Hospital for taking photos of uh, patient's genitals while she was under anaesthetic. I think that link is in there, so have a look at that case, particularly awful. Um, again, there can be an action for damages through the civil courts, uh, and they can pr face disciplinary proceedings through, well, the NMBA or APRA or the HCCC, the Healthcare Complaints Commission, so very serious indeed. 
Now, I mentioned that one of the legal actions that you can theoretically face if you breach confidentiality is defamation. Now, normally defamation in the past has been probably reserved for the, the likes of, you know, newspaper articles and so forth, and probably one that springs to mind very recently, if you've been watching the news, is Rebel Wilson has been successful in her claim for damages against Woman's Day or Woman's Weekly, where she, I think she received a subs. I don't know if they're still deciding what monetary compensation she's to receive. But there's been no case of nurses yet who've been actioned in defamation, but I think it's only a matter of time. And the reason is the advent of Facebook. Defamation is quite specific. Um, it's when a person's reputation is harmed and it has to have been published. So obviously with the the use of social media and, you, you know, writing things about patients on Facebook and so forth, um, it can probably and will lead to perhaps a, a patient bringing an action against a nurse uh, at one point. So I'm always mindful of, particularly when you look at your social media policy, be very, very careful because uh, this is somewhere that is new territory for nursing. And um, yes, there's lots of nurses been um, disciplined using social media, but not one yet for defamation, but I think it will only be a matter of time. So I think it's important just to summarise key practice points. It's something that you never want to, to do because you wouldn't, if you put yourself in the patient's shoes, you can only imagine how you would feel if very private information is divulged, either inadvertently, it's a mistake, or God forbid that you intend to do it, which you shouldn't be in the profession of nursing anyway. But it's always really important. The simple things are the best. Don't discuss patients' information in public places, lifts, uh, tea rooms, outside. And it becomes even more of a, you know, heightened when you're in remote rural or regional areas because everyone knows something. So it's, you have to be very, very careful. Don't discuss with family unless authorised. Important to clear screen, clear desk. Just always be mindful who's watching and uh, treat the information as if it was your very own. And really, the documents, uh, the professional documents, you really must know, and that's why we're using them in the tutorials, are the New South Wales Health Policy, the Privacy Manual, because everything to cover uh, the standard for practice, if you like, in relation to this area of nursing and protecting patients' information and healthcare records is covered in this document. And I'd also advise you again to refer to the social media policy on the NMBA and the link is in your modules. I just thought it useful to bring you to the New South Wales Government Health website. For those of you who might not be familiar, uh, I know that we do do this in the tutorials, but I thought nonetheless I'll walk you through it myself again because it is a document that's just so important. Uh, the Privacy Manual, as I said, is the, the legal document that all healthcare workers um, are governed by law to abide by. And this really does set the scene for everything to do with privacy and confidentiality if you're working in New South Wales Health. So it gives you, this is, it's actually the third edition, so they've just updated it. So it's a large document, uh, but nonetheless, you do have to refer to it. And actually in your tutorials, we make you have a look at a couple of questions there. So you'll see all the legislative guidelines that the manual is bound by and it's got various sections to it. But if we just click on that, and it will come up. Your privacy manual, this is the one we're talking about. So it's the third edition. Who is bound by it? What sort of information does the manual cover? And really, it is really broad and very comprehensive. It even covers consent in there as well, which if you remember, we covered earlier. So very, very 
useful piece of information and if you've ever got anything or any question in relation to disclosing information, who owns records, mandatory reporting, child sexual assault investigation kits, you name it, it's covered in here. All right, so I thought that was useful to refer to. So that's the privacy manual, very important document. So we'll just go back to our final screen and just finish off. So in summary, as nurses, we have a professional and now legal duty to maintain privacy and confidentiality. So hopefully I've distinguished between the two terms, you know that. In exceptional cases such as public interest, this duty is waived. So very important that you know how to maintain confidentiality, but you just have to be aware of the, the, the statutes that are in place that um, mean that you know, we don't have to be, we have to disclose information. So be aware of those. And you must be familiar with policy standards and legislation in this area, which we've talked about. But the main one, obviously, is the privacy manual. So lots to look at, lots to read. So happy reading. Thank you.